Um, item number 13, the draft submission on the Resource Management Amendment Bill. Uh, we've got, um, uh, um, we're, we're approving the draft submission, which, which you have now as an attachment um, for lodgement to the Select Committee subject to any directions provided by Council to staff on any changes to the draft submission. So I, I might get staff just to quickly um, run through the key features because for some of you it will be brand new, for others of us, um, we've kind of been all over it, um, and the the mayor and myself, the, the, um, the mayor and general manager of strategy and transformation to incorporate any changes to the submission resulting from those directions, and then requ request staff to present the submission to the select committee, and to provide the select committee with any additional technical comments that support the council's submission, um, and so yeah, so that's are they are they having yeah, are they having hearings? That's uh, that's our expectation. Yes. So, did, did we, would we not want a political voice um, at the table for that, or if we regarded it as particularly important? Yes, uh, if you regard it as sufficiently important to do that. Right. So, I mean, I haven't discussed it with the with the relevant. Um, Committees. That's your committee, Mike. Now, um, but it's around the around around the presenting the submission itself. It's to whether whether myself or someone else should um, should make make the submission. I mean, that it's it, it doesn't involve travel necessarily, but it but it could tie in with a, a visit to Wellington anyway. So anyway. Um, uh, yeah. All right. So perhaps if you want to give a quick summary. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark Stevenson. I'm a team leader in the city planning team. I'm joined to the right by Peter Eamon and Brent Pizzi. Um, as context, the, the government's invited submissions on the Resource Management Amendment Bill until the 7th of November. Uh, submissions were invited from the 27th of September. Um, the amendment bill proposes uh, changes to the Res Resource Management Act and uh, that's both amendments to existing provisions and new provisions that um, seek to improve and clarify existing RMA processes and introduce new, new processes for freshwater management and increased powers to the Environmental Protection Agency, a national agency responsible for a range of matters. Um, this, uh, this bill affects council in and its different roles. So it has an impact on council as regulatory authority, um, the, sort of, the part of council that's responsible for the district plan and its administration. It also affects council in its capacity as a applicant and or consent holder in the delivery of projects, infrastructure, for example. Um, in terms of s some of the amendments, it's um, repealing it's repealing amendments that were introduced in 2017 by the previous government. And um, I'll just set out some of the key areas that um, we can staff, staff have identified as important issues to bring to your attention. Um, the first relates to financial contributions, which um, under the 2017 amendment were to be phased out by 2022. Um, this amendment bill proposes to enable councils to continue charging financial contributions as a condition on resource consents. Um, there is proposed to be an exemption for the Minister of Education and Minister of uh, Defence from being charged financial contributions. So, for instance, if a school was being designated by the Minister of Education, there's a risk of um, effects that council could not impose conditions on by way of a financial contribution to offset the impacts of that school. Mm. Um, another significant uh, change is new enforcement powers to the Environmental Protection Agency. Um, the submission expresses support for, those, um, for that power but does express concern with the extent of the powers and whether that reflects the intent behind the bill to assist councils and um, raise the profile of enforcement action. Um, it appears from the bill that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Authority, could intervene. Um, council would have to stop its own actions um, 
and the EPA would effectively take over. Um, and so the submission seeks that that intervention is subject, subject to the agreement of council if it is to intervene. Um, another change is increasing infringement fees that are um, charged for any, um, any non-compliance with the district plan, for example. Um, that increases the fees from $2,000 sorry, from $1,000 to $2,000 for normal persons and $4,000 for companies and trusts. Um, the nature of the submission is that uh, that's supported, but there is a need for consistency between the Act and regulations that are prepared under it. Um, as I touched on earlier, there's a new process for freshwater management, so that process enables the Regional Council to amend the regional policy statement and regional plans to make amendments to give effect to a new national direction on freshwater management. You may recall that Council made a submission in the last term on the new national policy statement on freshwater management, and this bill seeks to provide a streamlined process to enable its implementation. Um, the, the, there are, whilst there is support for the, um, for the principle of a streamlined process, there are a number of aspects in the bill that the submission the draft submission expresses concern around. Um, limits on appeal rights to points that have been recommended by a hearings panel and rejected by the Regional Council. And, uh, sorry, appeal rights will be limited to where um, the Council, the Regional Council has rejected a recommendation of the hearings panel and only where it's within Council's submission. Just to clarify, in the respect of this new process, council, this Council would be, um, have a role potentially as a submitter, um, otherwise the process is very much um, for amending regional planning documents by ECAN. Um, the hearings panel um, that is appointed by the Minister for the Environment, um, the, the panel would not be limited in their scope of what they could consider, so they could potentially make a, uh, make a recommendation that's beyond the scope of a submission and that introduces issues of fairness to um, the submitters that have uh, made comments. Uh, the Regional Council has a right to reject recommendations of the hearings panel and come to its own view, uh, come to a different position, and um, we've expressed concerns about that. Um, and uh, the third point to make is that um, the Regional Council could request significant variation, could propose significant variations to a, a planning document and the process around those variations is not clear, but it could signal that there's no right of submissions or uh, ability to make comments on those variations. And what we're proposing as a, um, to better articulate in the draft submission at the end of paragraph 48 is a recommendation that any change to rectify an omission or error is subject to a variation or plan change under a standard RMA process. Um, that last aspect I made, I commented on, is not currently in the draft submission and we can make that clear in the draft submission uh, subject to your approval. Um, as a concluding comment on that new process, it's fair to say that if those changes that we're, uh, we've proposed in the draft submission were to be accepted, then it would be um, limited in, in so far as it would, would not be a streamlined process as such. It would be more akin to a standard RMA process. Um, other aspects of the bill that the submission supports but Council may have a uh, different view on includes um, the ability for parties, including the hearings panel, to cross-examine other parties. And uh, the second point is that if a submitter does not attend a pre-hearing meeting before a formal hearing, um, the current bill proposes that that submitter would not have the right to present their submission at the hearing if they were to miss the pre-hearing meeting. So um, there's two... Um, two changes there just to draw particular attention to. Um, the last points relate to um, notification and appeal rights on applications for resource consent. Um, the Act repeals amendments that were made in 2017 and reinstates the ability for notification and for rights of appeal on subdivision and residential activity, which um, in the draft submission, that reinstatement of those rights is supported. Um, the submission does go further than what the bill proposes and seeks that the rights of appeal are provided for boundary um, activities. So if, an acti if someone's wanting to build a house closer to the boundary than what's permitted, at the moment, rights of appeal, there's not a right of appeal if the neighbour 
has opposed that and the decision goes against them, they don't have a recourse to the court and the submission seeks that they should have that recourse. Um, lastly, the submission um, seeks the removal of the ability for the Minister to pro propose regulations for activities to be fast-tracked. So there is a pro there is a opportunity for a fast-tracking of applications, but um, uh, the submission seeks that that's repealed and is in support of the bill in that regard. Okay, so we're very aware that this is stage one of a two-stage process. Um, just in terms of where you would rate these issues, because I'm, 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 I'm not convinced that it needs political input. I'm just saying that it's something we should turn our minds to as to whether there are particular points that we wanted that degree of emphasis. Because I think, you know, if, if the mayor turns up, then it's a higher degree of interest than if it's a, you know, it's, um, it, it's seen as an organisational submission. So, mm. um, so, but we're signing off on it. So I, I guess um, I'm looking for some, some guidance as to whether there is effort to be directed here. Uh, or whether it's better to um, wait. I, I mean, I can't see in terms of the time frame that we'll get through to a bill by the end of uh, next year, mm. um, which is a, a general election. Yeah, uh, I understand. Um, the st second stage of amendments, which would be more significant, um, is proposed to be post the next election. Yeah. yeah. Um, the nature of the amendments, um, there's limited information on, but there has been uh, indications that it's uh, more comprehensive in reviewing, um, amongst other things, the purpose and uh, the purpose of the Resource Management Act and extending it to um, consider more urban issues. Yeah. The, the government's presentation of what it's doing in this bill is that it's a tidy up and it's undoing the changes that the previous government made. Uh, which is a fairly regular sort of cycle. I know. Um, th 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 that's, that's the way it's been presented, but um, there are some matters that I think the elected members may be particularly interested in, and I'd just like to highlight three of them, as yep. Thanks, Mark's, Mark's described. First one is, as he said, um, there's a central government organisation called the Environmental Protection Authority that doesn't have any enforcement powers. This bill gives it enforcement powers and it enables it to step into this council's shoes and take over enforcement of the RMA um, and tell this council it has to stop an enforcement action that it's already started. That might be of concern, and the submission suggests that um, it's inappropriate for, that, for the bill to give the, the central government agency the power to step in without that being invited by the council. Can you think of a, a kind of a practical example of where that could occur? Um, let's, uh, so in, enforcement is, is on a spectrum um, if someone's in, in breach of a legal obligation. Enforcement can be on a spectrum from working through the issue with the person who's in breach and yeah. coming up with an, an agreed solution. Yeah. That's one end of the spectrum. At the other end is prosecution. And there's a number of steps under the RMA in between. This council might be going through an enforcement investigation and have chosen an enforcement preferred option, and then the EPA could, if this bill goes through with these provisions, say, oh no, um, the EPA is taking over the investigation, the EPA might want to step in at a different point on that spectrum than where the council's landed. So that's, that's one way it could play out. Right. Whether it's in relation to clearance of indigenous vegetation, maybe the council's working through a solution that involves environmental compensation rather than an enforcement order or prosecution. Um, another agency now has the power, if, this, if these provisions go through, to step in and say, no, they, they want to uh, take a different enforcement approach. I've broken rule number one, but I haven't read the regulatory impact statement. So what... What was the reason for the um, proposed change? How was it described? Uh, just bear with me a moment. Um, so the, um, the impact statement notes that the EPA's role would complement council's functions. The EP that doesn't sound very complimentary no, no. to me. <laughs> the, um, the EPA would assist councils and intervene in the CMA, the compliance monitoring 
uh, role of councils in certain, certain cases. It goes on to state the, um, the intervention function could assist in situations where there's a benefit in the EPA having political independence and in raising the profile of the compliance monitoring and enforcement uh, of compliance monitoring and enforcement across the sector. Now, in the draft submission, we um, express concern that it doesn't seem that the additional power is necessary to achieve those purposes of raising profile and political independence. There's other means of um, raising the profile of compliance and monitoring that doesn't require the EPA to have that power. Um, and similarly, the um, aspect of political in independence, if, uh, if there are um, perceived or identified by the EPA as political, inter uh, political interference, um, the EPA having stepping in is not going to necessarily resolve that issue. It's a, it's a broader issue that, um, um, and the examples of that, of that aren't, aren't, aren't conveyed in the impact statement, so. No, so, um, so, so, so the solution proposed in the, in the submission is that uh, yeah, that's fine as long as the council invites them in. Yes. Yeah. So there would be benefit in EPA having the power, but on invitation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, and I interrupted you. That, that's right. I was just going to say, so, so that was one of the three particular yep. points I thought the elected members might be interested in. Second one is, again, as Mark said, um, the bill um, reinstates some appeal rights that were taken away in the last round of changes to the RMA by the last government. So it reinstates some of the appeal rights, but not all of them. Right. So the submission, the draft submission, suggests that the council support all of those appeal rights in relation to resource consents being reinstated, not just the part in the bill. That's the second thing. Um, third one um, is the to do with the fresh water panel. Now, a freshwater panel isn't necessarily a bad idea. Um, it's a panel of experts. Um, um, what I thought elected members might be interested in is, the, in particular, the appeal right aspect of it. Um, so is the view around the Council that there should be unconstrained appeal rights in relation to ECAN making a decision on freshwater management in a regional plan? Or is the council view that there should be, as proposed in the bill, very constrained appeal rights? So, so whose appeal rights are being constrained in that regard? The submitter. So ECAN's, ECAN, for example, proposes a change to its um, regional plan. Yeah. And that change is to do with management of freshwater. And the, freshwater includes groundwater, by the way. So nitrates would be yep. a, a potential issue? Yep. My favourite subject? The, this yes. council wants to put in a submission saying there should be better protection of the groundwater. Yep. If the, the, the way the bill's drafted, if the hearings panel makes a recommendation to the regional council that's against the um, against the objective sort in the council's this council submission, right? And the regional council accepts the hearings panel's recommendation, then this council has no right of appeal to the environment court. Right. If, however, the hearings panel recommendation isn't accepted by the regional council, then this council as submitter does have a right of appeal to the environment court. Right. And that's, that's so. So if if the hearings panel decision goes against what this council as a submitter seeks, then this council's appeal rights on the merits of the decision to the environment court are barred. Right. The council can only appeal to the high court, alleging error of law. Right. So it becomes an administrative law issue. Yeah. 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 So, so okay. the advantage, you know, uh, the obvious advantage of this process is that it makes the decision making for ECAN, ECAN more efficient by taking away appeal rights. Mm. But they don't have to take 
that they don't have to give any weight to our views. Oh, they have to give weight to them, but uh, yeah, no, they, but they, they, it they, doesn't have a in the hierarchy that applies in these resource management spaces. We ain't up there with them. Well, they're the decision maker. We, yeah. we, we would be the submitter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that so the draft submission. Do councillors share this concern? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's the seventh of November. Look, I, I'm absolutely. I'm, I'm away next week, um, so I'm I'm absolutely fine for um, councillors to do this. But if you if you could um, sort of approve the direction of the draft submission, so that we've got we've got that direction, so we're on the right track, um, uh, um, and then sort of. Um, for lodgement, um, any directions provided by council, um, any directions provided by um, a uh, by by a um, uh, by by a uh, council um, uh, workshop. So, I mean, if we if we can hold one before uh, with sufficient time, so it have to be Monday or Tuesday next week or something, um, and. Uh, but but that that would enable you to 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 just get some additional additional feedback and and work it through because um, or what we could do is we could just generally approve the draft submission, we could um, uh, ask for a workshop to to potentially provide for a supplementary so there's no reason why you can't add to it. Um, once you've lodged a submission, you can lodge a supplementary um, mm. or table another paper when you get there. So I mean, there are two ways of skinning the cat, as it were, and um, and then um, request uh, the mayor and/or staff to present the submission. So that way, that we've got a an either-or situation around that, and um, we'll take a we'll take a um, oh yeah, I can make a call as to whether there's um, a reason to have that political input. From what you've said so far, I actually think it is worth it. Sure. Yeah. All right. So if we could, um, so we're, we're going to approve the draft submission. We're going to um, any direction. Yeah. Um, and then just uh, perhaps after after one, put um, uh, no at the end of that paragraph. Just put uh, note that uh, councillors um, will workshop. Um, Aspects of the submission prior to it being presented, uh, pr pr prior to the submission being presented to the select committee. So not submitted, but presented. Yeah. All right. And that way, th if there's additional stuff that needs that comes up in that context, it can go a little bit further. Yanni. Just, um, I think we've discussed this before, but like you know, the submission's quite wordy and very technical. But there's actually some very real life examples that would illustrate some of the concerns that we're raising, particularly around things like public notification, um, but also things like Ministry of Education. I mean, if you looked at the schools that were designated yep. and you saw the cost that we're having to provide. Yanni, this is a debating issue. So, so uh, no, oh, I'm, I know you're being helpful. I knew exactly what you okay. were going to so say. Can, can we get some why examples? I totally agree with what we're submitting. To add some colour? Yeah. No, we don't need to write that into the submission. Save something for the presentation. Right, but I just yeah. want to make it clear that we will do some work around that. We will, yeah. and that's what your workshop's for, to help bring that out. But I know about Wollstone School, and I totally agree with you. Um, Melissa? No. There were three parts in the um, report that asked for potential views of council that could be included where you haven't included them already. And one of them, I wondered if we should just mention because you've um, in 4.6.10 you've said about the reversal in the sub subdivision presumption and then we're not making any comments on that because it's already included in our district plan that you need to have a consent maybe we should just be stating that or even saying we just have, I don't know there was something I that was one of the three points I thought it'd be worth commenting on uh, my, 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 my recommendation to the council on that would be that it's a technical point that's neither here nor there in terms of effects on the ground. But if we were to change our district, yeah, I guess. 
I was thinking in the future if we were to change our district plan, like or someone in the future was to change our plan, it would. I mean, it would fit under the bill, of course, but then it would be changing sort of the. I don't know. I, I, I guess I was wondering what other councillors thought. Sorry. I was wondering what other councillors thought and whether we should put anything in there about it. About. About whether we want to say that we. Um, we don't want to really reverse subdivision presumption because we're not doing it in our district plan, but it would be allowed for in the bill. And if we changed our district plan, obviously you wouldn't. But does anyone know what I'm saying? Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps, sorry. Um, perhaps if I just clarify what the what the bill does. So um, the RMA used to have a presumption that um, you need resource consent for subdivision. Unless the district plan says it's permitted activity, yeah. And then, in the last round of changes, I think it was the last round of changes. It might have been the one before that. Um, that was changed to being a presumption that subdivision is permitted, yeah. Unless the plan says it's not, yeah. And so, what this government says it's doing is changing that presumption back to what it was originally. Now, um, this, the staff recommendation on this is that well, it doesn't really matter to this council because. Um, this council's district plan says that you need resource consent if you want to subdivide. That's right. And it's always been that way. Um, so it's neither here nor there from, from a staff point of view. Basically, the rule that's in the plan will work and Whichever. still have the same Whichever effect. Whichever way. Irrespective of what, which way the act is written. Yeah, yeah. yeah I understand all that. I'm just thinking into the future, but that's OK. Yeah. Well, we'll just make sure that our rules are written the same way. Yeah. So yeah. That doesn't matter. Yeah, but I think I mean if the rules get written in the future and whatever the act says, I mean they'll be taken into account. But it does sound like that this is just going to be backwards and forwards, to and fro every time we get a change of government, which is um, unhelpful, I have to say. Um, any any other questions, Yanni? We're going to have a workshop, but I just want to make sure that we can pick up on the noise issues because they are touching on enforcement and no enforcement around noise. Are and there any changes to the in the bill that, that are proposed around the noise provisions? Um, I don't think so. Mm. The, it's, the, it's around enforcement. Uh, so, uh, yes, so the other issue than is around enforcement. General enforcement. Mm. Yeah, so I've, I've read the risks, um, the regulatory impacts summary, and you know, like it is clear that one of the things they're trying to address is the way in which we enforce things in the RMA. And I think it would be really useful to talk to our noise guys about just the frustration of how that process works. But and hang on, this is about the EPA stepping in? So, um, so are you saying that we should allow the EPA to step in all by themselves without being invited to? I think we should take the opportunity to raise a concern around enforcement around noise. Um, and you know, if it gets ruled out, it gets ruled out. But there's definitely an issue there. And if you get the feedback from our noise guys, it would yeah. be really good to just. But Yanni, raise what it. I don't want to do is to make a submission to Parliament that is off subject in terms of the bill, because they, they won't appreciate it if they do, unless there's a mechanism that the bill could amend the Resource Management Act to um, to meet a, a, a requirement in the scope of the bill that is not being met at the moment. So uh, I'll leave that to the workshop, but if, that's, if that can be done, well then obviously we've got an open mind, but if it, if it can't be, I don't want to waste Parliament's time either. Yeah, I just want to consider if it was yep. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so um, would someone like to move that um, we do this? Uh, Melanie uh, seconded Mike. Um, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. It's carried. Thank you very much.